Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another installment of 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, we got a good one for you guys. We are at WrestleMania 7 already. Whew, uh, WrestleMania 7, interesting. Uh, this one, if you remember from WrestleMania 6, if you guys are watching along, God bless you, because I know these events are long. But if you're not, WrestleMania 6 had that this was going to be at the LA Sports Arena. Over, like, 100,000 seats. Um, not exactly where we're ending up. Um, basically, they're, they're kind of in the, in the, in the, the much smaller place next door. Now, there's two schools of thought on why that occurred. One of them is that Sergeant Slaughter was getting death threats based on his, uh, the character he was portraying for the main event, an Iraqi sympathizer. The other school of thought is they couldn't exactly sell enough tickets to sell out the place. You know, one or the other. Probably a happy combination of both, because I know Slaughter was getting death threats, and they're concerned about safety. But, um, yeah, so... But still, uh, this one felt a little bit more intimate. It, it's it's nice, because we don't really get that anymore with WrestleMania, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, still a decent crowd. Still about 16,000. A little bit more than that. But, uh, so let's get into the card. Uh, this, this WrestleMania has a couple big distinctions on it. I'll get to them. Because when this WrestleMania is good, it's really very good. When it's bad, it's really not good. <laughs> and I will get to why that is, uh, when we get there. But the first match... Not the first time he'll open the show. Not the last time. Mr. WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels, teaming with Marty Jannetty, finally gets his first WrestleMania win. Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty beat the Barbarian Haku uh, with Bobby Heenan. Now, this, I'm not going to lie, when this, when this WrestleMania started, Hacksaw Jim Duggan is on commentary with Jesse Ventura. Because uh, not with Jesse Ventura, with Gor with Gorilla. Because Jesse Ventura, I'm pretty sure has left WWF at this point. Uh, he's not anywhere on the pay per view. It's a little weird, especially since they're touting they're in LA, they're in Jesse's town. But yeah, uh, Jesse's nowhere to be found. Uh, so uh, it was it was a fun match though, and Hacksaw actually wasn't terrible on commentary. He really wasn't. Um, but then we get to. And this happens a lot of this WrestleMania. A lot of super duper duper short matches. Uh, you have the Texas Tornado going up against Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo is one of those guys that I don't know why he worked with WWE for so long. Um, I never really, I don't, Dino Bravo, there's no distinct memory of Dino Bravo in my head. Like a lot, a lot of the mid card monster heels back in the day, I can at least remember some stuff. Dino Bravo never really stuck out, and Texas Tornado beats him really quickly with the discus punch. Um, and then apparently also uh, Dynamite Kid's gone at this point because we have the British Bulldog rolling solo against the Warlord. A uh, little bit better match, a little bit better match. Uh, Bulldog does get the win here in his singles debut at WrestleMania, which is good. And uh, but yeah, Warlord was always one of those fun guys, you know, like one, one of the big bruiser types. Uh, but speaking of big bruisers, we have our first championship match of the evening. Moving on, the Heart Foundation, the tag team champions, going up against Knobs and Sags and Nasty Boys. Um, it it was it was really good. I liked it a lot. Um. As we'll see, the nasty boys, the nasty boys seem like they're going to be transitional champions. We'll get to why that is in a second, but it seems like they're going to be. But they still had a really good match with Jim, with uh, Heart Foundation. Uh, it you know it was just it's unfortunate that the Heart Foundation didn't get a better run, but you know they 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 still had, they still had a good run with the tag titles as they won them at uh, WrestleMania six, I believe. But the next match, this may be one of my favorite. This, I'd say it's definitely my favorite on the card tonight. Um, and I know that may seem sacrilege to a few people, but I will explain myself. This, I think, is my favorite match on the card. It might be my favorite WrestleMania match so far. 
Um, it's another first, a blindfold match. Yeah, yeah, we got a blindfold match. It, if you know your WrestleMania history, you know who this is between Jake the Snake Roberts, the model Rick Martel. Uh, Jake Roberts got blinded with arrogance, and someone gave him weird color context where he had like one whited out eye. It's amazing. It's really, really cool to see. But, um, you know, when you're a kid, you watch this blindfold match, and they have they have sacks over the head. Like Jake is pointing, 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 and he waits to hear the crowd, the fans cheer, and then he dives for Rick Martel, and and it's. They never give up the illusion. They really don't. Both these guys are masters at their craft. But if you watch it with adult eyes and you know they can see, it's even more amazing. There's one point where Martel um, is able to get his hands on Jake and gives him a big scoop slam. And then <laughs> Jake rolls out of the way out of this, after the scoop slam and Martel just elbows the mat like like he went like he went bionic elbow like he was trying to do a dusty roads elbow and he just ate nothing but mat it's amazing um but yeah Jake Roberts gets the win uh, he hooked and cooked with DVD the DDT and that was all she wrote but it definitely worth your time it's not a long match as blindfold matches generally can't be 30 man iron man classics but it's definitely worth your time definitely find this match it's super fun to watch um, now, uh, this, this next match, we get a debut of, uh, of someone at WrestleMania. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him. He has an interesting history with WrestleMania. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm reading, I'm reading the wiki. The Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah. The Undertaker motherfuckers. Taker. First match at WrestleMania. This is where the streak begins he destroys jimmy hart uh jim jimmy hart jimmy snooka very easily um it's great it's great to see old school taker like he still has he still has the the athleticism that he does today but he follows it up by being very slow and methodical which is fun and um next we get to the match that probably most people know this wrestlemania for and i i'm on record is saying it is my least favorite WrestleMania match of all time. It's the uh, it's a first ever retirement match between the Ultimate Warrior and the Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, um, on record, least favorite WrestleMania match of all time. And um, I mean, uh, you, it's a good match. Do not get me wrong. This is. The Ultimate Warrior's best match I've ever seen of his. Um, it's not Randy's. It's not Randy's best match. I've seen much, much better Randy Savage matches I liked. Uh, I'd say it's easily, easily Warrior's best match. The thing that pisses me off the most is Macho Man hits four elbow drops. Four elbow drops and it doesn't keep the Warrior down. Now, I know that's the story. I'm aware of that. It's fine. But I am a Macho Man fan. That's me. That's how I roll. So fuck the Ultimate Warrior. That said, Savage does kick out of the Warrior's finish too, which I did not remember, and I'm okay with that. But the end of this match. You guys, if you don't roll a tear a little bit, or at least like you know, get some dust in the air, at the end of this match, you, you might not have a soul. Um, Savage is in the ring uh, after Warrior wins. And Queen Sherry just beats the crap out of him. Just beats the crap out of him. And we were shown before that uh, Elizabeth was in the crowd watching the match. Macho Man doesn't know she's there. But Elizabeth was watching the match. And Elizabeth runs out to make the save. Knocks down Sherry. And... um. And uh, it's beautiful. They hug. They 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 embrace. Macho Man lifts her up, and we all know this leads to the match made in heaven, the match made in hell, the wedding. You know, 
yada, 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 the will you marry me? All that stuff and the horrible wedding song they have. But, man, this is a good moment. It's a damn good moment, you guys. You can't help it. You can't fucking help it. It's such a good moment. It almost forgives I don't like the finish of the match. Almost. Comes really close. Um, but moving on from there, we have a, a bit of a bit of a Japanese flair, and I believe this was because of the uh, LA locale, but we have Tenru and Koji Katao against Demolition. Now, this is a different definition. It's Smash and Crush. I'm pretty sure Axe was probably injured at this point. But I think we get the three-man team of Demolition back later. I'm not positive on that. We may have already missed that window. Uh, but we never got it at WrestleMania, which is interesting. But yeah, uh, Tamaru and Koji, uh, both former sumo wrestlers. I had to do a little research on Koji Katal. I knew I know who Tamaru is, obviously. But uh, yeah, really fun match, if not a little bit short. But uh, the uh, Japanese boys, they get their win. Yeah, really fun. Next, I think this might be the worst Intercontinental title match at a WrestleMania. Because on paper, you look at it, and it should be amazing. The big boss man up against Mr. Perfect. It should be amazing. Both those guys, future NWO members now that I think about it, but both those guys are fantastic. And... This is a less than three minute affair. Ends of Andre Giant running out in weird street clothes. Well, not running, but you know, Andre Giant interfering and Bossman wins via DQ. Eh, it's there. It exists. Um, yeah. It, I actually, I think it's Andre's last WrestleMania appearance. So that is a notable thing about this match because I don't think he's at WrestleMania eight. I don't think he's passed by then, but I think he's just done in general. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that, that was the intercontinental title match. Very disappointing from IC matches we've seen in the past and that we'll see in the future too. Cause WrestleMania eight, if you guys know your history, WrestleMania eight has an amazing intercontinental title match in it, which I can't wait to watch again. Um, but then we get a few matches here that are just, a lot of nothing. Earthquake and Greg Valentine. Three minutes squash match. Legion of Doom. Who you'd think would be amazing against Power and Glory. Hercules and Paul Roma. The Legion of Doom literally win in less than a minute. Like they scoop up Paul Roma right away. Him with the Doomsday device. And that's all she wrote. Because Legion of Doom cut a promo beforehand. Saying they're going after the nasty boys. So hashtag transitional champions. Um, th we do get one real match in between. Uh, we have Virgil breaking away from the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. And, um, it's a singles match. Roddy Piper is in the corner of Virgil. I'm not sure if Piper was originally supposed to have this match or if Virgil was, but Piper had recently been in a car accident. So this actually gets kind of awkward because it ends with Ted DiBiase just kind of beating the crap out of a, not sure how legit gimped up Roddy Piper. It gets a little weird, and Virgil wins by count out. Like, I think they probably should have given Virgil a straight win, but yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, and then the the buffer for the main event is the Mountie, who is not, I'm sorry, he's not the full blown Mountie yet. He doesn't have the song. But he does hit Tio Santana with a cattle prod to get a win in under in a minute and a half. And now, oh man, you guys, Hulk Hogan, Sergeant Slaughter with General Adnan in his corner. Now, this match is a bit awkward. It is. If you don't remember the Gulf War situation, uh, there was a lot of stuff going on between the US and Iraq. A lot of stuff still going on. But um it's it's a weird thing to watch because Hulk Hogan it's definitely it's kind of like Rocky Four a little bit, but I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of stuff that they do in this match today that wouldn't fly. 
that wouldn't fly today. Like, there's one point where Hulk Hogan rips up the Iraqi flag. You know, stuff that really legitimately wouldn't fly today, regardless of what the political climate is. I could see where they would be a little nervous for Sergeant Slaughter. I kind of feel bad for Slaughter, but to his credit, Slaughter is an amazing heel. Slaughter is a fucking fantastic heel. You have to give him all the credit in the world for this. This match is really fun. It's, you know, it might be the best Hogan match of this era. It might be. I st- I think I still lean a little towards uh, Bundy or Savage. But this one's really fun, too, because it's different. It's different. It's Sergeant Slaughter, like, uh, like they keep seeing the rule books out the window. Like, it, it's a different, fun kind of match. And it goes, you know, good length. It goes about 20 minutes. Uh, definitely one to check out. Keep your jingoistic pride at the door. <laughs> Because, oh, oh man, there is a lot of America talk. Um, the celebrities that were involved in this uh, WrestleMania, we had Regis Philbin and Alex Trebek. Both awesome. Both really, really good. They were a couple backstage st- skits. Regis on commentary for the May event. It's a lot of good stuff. And uh, we also have Marla Maples, who doesn't really do a whole lot. She doesn't. It's okay. Her uh, then husband, Donald Trump, is in the crowd. I wonder if this might be where he got his foreign policy uh, from watching Hulk Hogan. But <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for WrestleMania 7. WrestleMania 8, see, I'm trying to do these locations for the future one from memory because I want to see how good my WrestleMania knowledge is. WrestleMania 8, I believe we go to the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's right. But, uh, yeah, that one should be interesting because that's 1992, and we are very infinitesimally close to when Mad Mike was actually watching WrestleManias live. Uh, WrestleMania 8 is the last one of the VHS era where I had to catch up on WrestleMania. So, uh, yeah, I know one or two. I know three matches on there for sure that I remember very clearly. Um, the rest of the card kind of fuzzy on kind of looking forward, looking forward to remembering it. I'm pretty sure there's a family feud thing going on there with Ray Combs. I might be mistaken on that, but I'm pretty sure there's like an eight man tag with all of the gimmicks, all of the gimmicks. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's WrestleMania eight. All right. So, um, for next time I'm mad Mike and, um, see you at WrestleMania.